After a roller coaster of a year, the Overwatch League Season 3 ended with the San Francisco Shock defending their title as back to back world champions. Starting off the year, things looked bright as the league had finally embarked on its much anticipated home and away system, with home stands being held in cities like Dallas and tickets being purchased by fans looking forward to attending at least one in person event this season. However, the challenges of the global health pandemic and the implementation of hero pools drastically changed how the season played out, as both organizers and teams tried to adapt with the array of structural changes that were necessary to move everything to an online-only format. While we don't know what Season 4 will look like yet, there are many lessons that can be taken away from the 2020 season. In this video, we're going to go over some of the issues and discuss what we think Blizzard should do for the Overwatch League Season 4. Heading into the third season of the Overwatch League, Blizzard actively tried to shift the meta with the implementation of the Hero Pool system, which saw characters banned out on a weekly rotation. Creating a league and meta where different compositions and heroes would be on display every week was intended to prevent the meta from getting stagnant, but it ended up doing more harm than good. In addition to adding an extra layer of confusion for more casual viewers, Hero Pools placed a huge burden on a team's coaching staff. Due to the structure of hero pools being originally one week at a time, teams were asked to build a game plan and master it within seven days. Team owners, coaches, and players have gone on record about how they had to spend countless hours working into the night, devising strategies and coming up with new ideas. At one point early in the season, the heroes that went into the pool were chosen semi-randomly, either by raffle or even by cat. It's, Nori, this is it. It's game Touch time. One. Let's go, Nori. Yeah, I, just, I believe in you. Make sure you spread okay. them out. While this was often entertaining, it undercut some of the competitive nature of the league by giving teams too short of a turnaround time. Florida's coach Kuki described this process as hellish, saying, quote, After hero pools come out, we have two to three days of preparation, max. There are two options that you can take. It's either you find the best meta possible, or you kind of predict what your opponent for the next match is going to use and come up with a meta that counters that." End quote. Trying to guess what the meta would be from week to week created an environment which didn't actively encourage teams to grow and develop their strategies. Instead, every week we had a microcosm of a fleshed out meta, where new, bizarre compositions would appear before vanishing into the ever-churning mill of hero pools. For viewers, it was a novel experience, but not nearly as rewarding as seeing teams slowly but surely figure out the meta. And for the players, it was downright frustrating. On top of this, there was no real narrative arc to be drawn around team improvement because teams had to constantly scramble to figure out what the next meta was going to be. What's more is that by the end of the season, Hero Pools felt like more of an afterthought than the main focus. The three tournaments and playoffs that occurred in Season 3 were without Hero Pools, and all four of these tournaments produced high-level Overwatch that showcased teams adapting to a new meta and improving on it from week to week. For all the criticism that the Overwatch League has received for some of their initiatives, they have sought to actively correct their mistakes and learn from their errors. Blizzard first adjusted the length of the hero pools, going from one week to two. Then they changed how the hero pools were selected. This culminated in the removal of hero pools altogether when it came to tournaments, as the competitive integrity of high stakes matches demanded a constant meta rather than a constant scramble. At the end of the day, the fact that the OWL opted to remove hero pools for the most important events of the year indicates that hero pools are not the answer to meta stagnation. Hopefully Blizzard will continue to experiment with balance changes and find a common ground between creative metas and competitive integrity. After seeing viewership numbers decline, especially in the West with too many games being played, League organizers took note of what needed to change. One of the better pivots that the Overwatch League put into effect in the latter half of the season was the implementation of regional tournaments. Reminiscent of the stage format from Season 1, all three of these tournaments took the long and oftentimes sluggish regular season concept and broke it up into digestible phases where viewers could see how their favorite teams matched up against each other in a tournament format instead of having to wait for the end of season playoffs. The increased stakes in these tournament games made things a lot more interesting, as games were worth real money rather than just a few points that counted towards playoffs. These tournaments were undoubtedly the high point of the season, and were a breath of fresh air from the monotony of low stakes regular season matches. So how can the OWL emulate these tournaments and keep us engaged throughout next season? As we see it, there are two directions they could go. 
The first involves changing the league format to one that assigns points for each win, similar to that of the English Premier League in football. However, this format removes playoffs altogether, as whichever team accumulates the most points during the season is crowned the winners once the season ends. The trade-off is higher stakes regular season games, but no playoffs at the end of the year. Another option, and perhaps one that is better suited for the Overwatch League, is to set up a tournament structure similar to the one they used this year. One idea would be to break down the year into four intervals similar to how we had stages in the past. Each interval would begin with the first three or so weeks acting as seeding games before the start of a knockout tournament. This would give teams a chance to test out new strategies during the seeding stage and put it all on the line during the knockout stage. The benefit of this system is that it allows the team to grow accustomed to balance changes for a given patch and refine their strategies going into the tournament. This interval format would prevent the meta from stagnating as there would be new balance patches during each interval and would give teams enough time to develop a legitimate strategy, instead of going in blind from week to week. On top of this, by having points awarded for winning a tournament, there would be enough on the line for a compelling experience for both fans and teams alike. A more controversial change that the league could implement would be to permanently switch from a preset pool of maps to a new system where the losing team has the option to pick the next map. Teams would still play at least one control, one escort, one assault, and one hybrid, as well as the new push map from Overwatch 2, but teams would be able to shore up losses by going to a map that better suits them. In a set between two teams where there is a large skill disparity, it won't matter too much, but on the whole, this system could potentially lead to closer matches and fewer 3-0s. Enabling the losing team to choose the next map has already proven fruitful this season as it increases the potential for comebacks. On top of this, Overwatch has enough maps that practicing on less traditional maps could give underdog teams a strategic advantage. While we won't go too deep onto how Blizzard can support Tier 2 Overwatch, we wouldn't be doing our due diligence if we didn't at least mention it. The health of an esport is determined by the talent of the players, and a lack of support for lower tier competition has hurt the community on several fronts. Recently, Blizzard appears to have finally listened to the community's long-standing requests for the contenders' home and away skins to be made available in-game. Everyone has received the iconic Genji skin for free, and there's also plans to give out two skins to viewers each month. While having free skin drops is nice, increasing viewership does not necessarily correlate to creating a stronger tier 2 ecosystem. One could argue that improved viewership for contenders would bring in more sponsors for the teams, but for up-and-coming organizations, these opportunities are few and far between, as Blizzard seems reluctant to try and set up some sort of profit-sharing model. With that said, it would be great to have a monetization system put in place that would allow players to purchase contenders-related cosmetics and have a percentage of the sales go towards the contenders' prize pool. At the end of the day, there are many issues that need to be addressed with contenders, with each region facing their own unique set of challenges. But having more revenue coming into Tier 2 would improve the infrastructure that feeds into the Overwatch League itself and strengthen the Overwatch community as a whole. Lastly, it wouldn't be an understatement to say that Overwatch League fans want to see more creative segments that highlight both the personalities of the casters and talent on air, rather than the same stuff over and over again each time they cut to the broadcast. This year, the quarantine situation created a host of challenges to overcome, but we did see some interesting content pieces from the Overwatch League, like the Great Bake Off. The Watchpoint segments from 2018 are still beloved by the community. Segments like Judge Monty and Dr. Doa, where the crew attempts to diagnose problems with the Dallas Fuel, were creative and entertaining for pretty much everyone. Oh my, wow. Oh, there is... What are, you, what are you seeing? A lot going in here. Well, I mean, the first thing we need to talk about with your hand, your left hand, you have something that we like to call extremely questionable conduct, or uh, XQC for short. Oh no. While we know that not all of these things may be implemented next season, especially with how things could change up based on Overwatch 2's release date, we hope that Blizzard takes both a look at what worked this season and incorporate what other esports scenes are doing in order to improve the state of the Overwatch League. There are rumors that the League could be delayed until as late as April in order to sync up with the release of Overwatch 2, but we'll have to see, as nothing is set in stone. With that being said, what are some things that you are looking forward to seeing next season? Did your favorite player get let go? Or perhaps your favorite team cleaned house and are signing some new talent? Are you even watching the Overwatch League anymore? And if not, what would it take to make you a fan again? Let us know in the comments below. My name's Jonah, see you next time. 
This video is made possible thanks to our wonderful patrons. Massive thank you to everyone on this list, and shout out to Arknox, Sammy, Shampoo, Weeaboo, Nathan, Nate, Mauve, Sierra, and Foxy for being Platinum supporters. And an extra special shout out to Raffi, Noodles, Marco, and Steven for being Diamond supporters. You guys are the best. If you also want to support our channel and unlock perks, check out the Patreon link in the description below or join our Discord server. If you want to help us out in a different way, leaving a like, subscribing, and hitting the bell to stay up to date is also appreciated. My name is Jonah, thanks for watching.